to Enfogen Training. So my name is Faraz and I will be today uh, explaining you about some more details about the business partner creation. Okay. Uh, in my previous videos, you might have heard, uh, you might have seen me explaining about business partner creation, like uh, how do you create a business partner and what are the things that are linked with business partner, a customer master, window master, etc. And I've also explained in another video how to configure a business partner and link it with your customer master. But there are more things to that. And I was thinking to explain some more information about business partner and uh, just focusing on the general tab today uh, of the business partner. And then we'll, we'll move on to the sales and distribution and the finance view in separate videos, okay? So before I start, I would just request you to please like and subscribe because that will encourage me to make more videos and it'll be a huge, huge benefit for me uh, to keep creating good videos for you and you can keep learning SAP. So as you know, the transaction code for business partner is VP and we'll just pick up uh, any existing business partner. Let's see this one. And uh, this is the business partner already created and provided by standard best practice. So we'll just take as an example to show some of the things. So I'll just focus on the address on the general tab. So when I say general tab, it means that um, you might have noticed what is business partner role and and how it is linked uh, with the different views uh, that you want to create. So the general view is always in most of the projects created by these uh, this PP role zero zero. 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. And if you are looking to extend uh, to the sales view, then you have to use FLCU01. FLCU00 is for finance use. But uh, also, there are different views for each view. So, one business partner can have multiple roles. It can also be a vendor, it can also be a customer. So, that's why you see the BP role. But you can always watch the other video then. So, I'll be uh, explaining you. Uh, how and what are the different views that are common in in uh, in, the, in the general view and what you should be aware of so this is as you can see is the display so i'll just put it in a change mode I'm just clicking here and here you see title company these are the description of the uh, vendors that you want to put and and uh, by default the settings these are mandatory fields so you can't skip that you might have these as an optional field so you keep doing that and uh, uh, the search term the search term is supla3 for this but a search term uh, is important and essential when you are looking for uh searching vendor while exploring like for example you're creating a purchase order and you want to search uh the vendor then this becomes useful in the list in the drop down and this will come as as one of the suggested vendors already created okay so this is helpful you can make use of search term and this is uh this is street number but i'll just explain one more interesting things which you might have not explored before and here, what I'm trying to explain is if, uh, for example, this business partner 1730083 has more than one addresses, okay, then how do you uh, do that in the same uh, against the same business partner number? So, with S4 HANA, this has come as an additional feature uh, with before that it wasn't available uh, just for that sold to party you can just enter one address now here you can see in the address overview you have one address which is already defined now if i want to create another delivery address for the same customer then what do we do okay so first as you can see there are different folders different usages created so you can use uh, one uh, business partner for different addresses so this same business partner can be your sold to party and can be your ship to party. But when it comes to shipping, system wants to know what address it belongs to. So instead of uh, instead of creating a separate ship to party, you can also use the same sold to and ship to, but the delivery address needs to be defined. Okay, so here 
uh, when you work with your abapper and a developer in terms of printing the forms for delivery note or order acknowledgement you need to print the delivery address so that delivery address can be picked from here so how do we maintain that so what we do is we just click on create okay and then we say delivery uh, this just put domestic this for reference delivery address okay now i'll just put here a us and here i'll just put postal code as 9090 let's see whether it accepts enter postal code okay so we'll enter postal code let's say an random postal code okay so let's let's ignore this for now we don't have a PO box address. Uh, the use of five characters in the name one is restricted entry key in language key. Okay, so we'll just focus on the error message. Warning is okay. So you just put EN. It is important to put language because uh, when you are communicating with the business, uh, this language key can be used to uh, to configure the print of the form language. So if it is EN, then the wrapper or the developer can understand okay, this business uh, form needs to be printed in English. So that's why English lang or the language is very important because if you might be del delivering it into France or somewhere, so then, then French becomes important. So that's why this may this has been made as mandatory if you look at okay, so that's fine. So let's have it. So now here you have the domestic delivery address, okay. Now this can be assigned to your uh, delivery. So if we, uh, so when you are building a form or when you're working with an mapper to work on a form, the delivery address can be set as this address. Okay, you can say delivery address this. Okay, so this has taken as delivery address. So it makes it easier. So you can have a different. Uh, billing address a different delivery address all with the same business partner so this is one of the things that you should know uh, the benefits that have come off business partner okay so that's one thing now let's move on to the uh, next tab what i'm explaining in this video is the ben the usage of uh, bp role 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 okay or different tabs so you should know when you are working in a project now identification you don't have to understand each and every field, but the key ones are like if you are the one the ID type. Okay. So for example, if this um, business partner has some identification, which you need to put, for example, um, any uh, credit identification number or any number that it needs to be identified. So you can have, uh, different identification and each customer of uh, uh, right now these days have a credit history and all that so you, whether it is listed in uh, in one of the agencies and all that so that identification type can be created so it becomes easier for you to identify what is the uh, what is the number associated with that okay so let's see must be that's it, that's it. so because this credit identification what um, has certain naming convention pattern so positions five to seven must be zzz so let's see if it accepts this i'll just ignore this for now so let's see if i have this enter ID number, let's say if in, it has accepted one number. So ID type. So with this ID type, so these are links. So uh, as as the countries are evolving and as the ways of working are evolving, as we have more checks against the customer, uh, these are different identification type of the customer. So before you making an order, you can always check what is the credit history of the customer outside your organization, like generally. 
and then you know, what are the different identification like for example if you're implementing it in india then if you want to put an aadhar card id then you can always use that aadhar card number or if you're using uh, something in india uh, something in the uk then you can put the national insurance number all that id type if it is essential for your organization you can use that okay so that's uh, uh the one thing that you should be aware of okay you can always search uh what kind of legal form and legal entity this organization belongs to whether it's a corporation or a private company or whatever so if, if for example this is a private company uh this customer then you can always link that so these are some of the additional things that uh when you implement in an, when when you experience uh, implementing in a sap in a big organization you will see that these values will be maintained for that okay let's move on to the other tab now control has few fields that you should be aware of and one is the authorization group now authorization group is actually used by uh, the security and authorization team within the sap uh, team so this actually links uh, and create uh, access that this authorization group access is provided to certain set of users who have access to maintain or change the customer master so you can use that authorization group you can have other things linked with the authorization group but in my uh, projects i have used authorization group as one of the one of the field to put restriction by the users for example not everyone will be allowed to make changes in the address of the customer master or in the finance details of the customer master so you can make use of that okay and then let's see what bp type i mean this is not uh, this this wouldn't stop you doing your the transactions if you don't maintain this but it depends on organization to organization if you want to maintain it for reporting purposes that uh, bp type 0001 will always be a certain kind of business partner uh, and things so so sap has provided all that uh, options for you to make use of that okay any notes that you want to use in in your form printing uh, that you can also uh, make use of okay uh, business hours if the customer has some restrictions to contact and then it is defined then you can always maintain that it's also uh, not just uh knowing about the business hours but if you are looking for any edi integration that not to send any invoice or anything or uh, outside the office hours you can make use of that in edi integration as well with that okay now here payment transactions it is it was also there in ecc you you can link your bank details and everything so this is uh, again uh a restricted uh, tab which you can restrict it by authorization group or by uh certain changes in the vp role and vp grouping also that or not all um people will have access so you can maintain the payment details like how the customer is paid and only certain people will have access to update this okay now status is if you are from sales then you would see that there are certain customers who are blocked so you can't do delivery or billing to them and certain customers are not released so you can't actually create a full sales cycle against them you can also assign a status profile whether uh, what is the status profile of that uh, you can lock through the status profile as well okay so i'll just ignore this for now uh, but in in your implementations you will notice that you might have certain type of status profile uh, maintained which has more restrictions against it Okay, but don't worry about it yet. Okay, and then um, suppose there is a requirement in your organization that you want uh, to still keep the uh, business partner in your database, but don't want uh, your company to create any sales orders against them or to do deal any business with them. So you can make it a central block. So you can't actually process any transactions against. those customers okay so 
So where you list, uh, I, I haven't used it in any of the projects, but I think what it means is that wherever the business partner is being used, it might come here with the with the valid form and valid to date, but, but I don't have not seen this being used in the projects. And uh, additional text. So now this text is important for printing again. So if you're using a text determination and if you use text determination in the past and you would understand what are the benefits. So if you want to copy certain text from customer master into the sales order and print it in the uh, form, then you can make use of those text types and, and then configure it in the system. Okay. So then this text will be printed as part of terms and conditions or whatever you want to use it for. So you can make use of the text. Okay. So the, in, in, in businesses, in projects, there are often requirements that I want this text to be copied from the customer master in the sales order. So in, instead of configuring independently in the sales order, you can configure it here and it gets copied in different. So you can search more about text determination. Okay. In the same ID type, which I mentioned in the identification tab. So the same list of values will be provided here as well. So if you see here, the ID type can be maintained, uh, which you want to use uh, to identify the uh, customer. Okay. And also, I think this might have more additional features. If you want to create a new ID type for any technical purposes, then you can use it. When I say technical purposes, I mean, it can be used for security and authorization. It can be used for any reporting or it can be used for blocking or anything uh, based on the ID type because this ID type is a unique ID type which you can make use of, okay? Let's see what the help says for ID type. Yeah, so it may be it is the ID card which I've explained earlier. Uh, for the customer, but for some reason this drip drop down isn't showing here whereas in identification The ID type you had the drop down, okay So these are some of the things you should also explore and explain or tell me in comments If you've used any of the fields which I've explained in your configuration and what were the usage of if I've said anything incorrectly, please feel free to uh have your comments on it and see whether i can uh, improve on 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 any things that i've suggested has not been uh, used in your organization so that will help and and other people can also benefit from that so thanks all uh, for watching so like i said in the start of the video my aim is to make sure that the people who are learning and willing to get uh S into sap uh, should get the benefit out of these videos and also implement in their organizations and if they have any questions they can always come back in comments and i can i'm happy to help thanks for watching and you have a lovely rest of the day wherever you are thank you bye